This is Trials of Fire. Uh, I don't know the first thing about it. The only thing I know is that I saw that Tom Francis was streaming it, and I tend to like the games that Tom Francis streams. And so I looked at it briefly. I was like, oh, some kind of neat tactical game. Cool. And, and just grabbed it. So it was an impulsive uh, buy. And I have no idea what to expect from it. Also, I got very little sleep last night, and so I am just out of it. So I, if I'm a little bit incoherent, I have to apologize. Uh, I might not be the best person to be streaming Trials of Fire right now, or any uh, brand new video game, but I'm going to give it a try anyway. Oh, yes, absolutely. Let's play the tutorial. Whoa. All right. Well, I like the trappings of this game already. Um... Over the course of your journeys across Ash, you will encounter monsters and hostile denizens of the land. Combat is turn-based and requires tactical use of your party's st skill cards to defeat the enemy. Each hero brings a unique deck of cards to combat. Uh, re re see, I can't even talk today. Uh, representing their training, innate abilities, and equipment. To win a battle, you have to defeat all enemies on the map by reducing their health to zero. Here, your hunter and warrior heroes are facing off against a pair of injured, charred warriors. I guess if this place is called Ash, you gotta have some charred warriors. Everything your heroes do can, uh, oh, that they can do in battle is driven by the skill cards that they have in hand. Skill cards serve as your available actions and also the resources you'll need to pay for those actions. Ah, I see, yes, two. Uh, one thingy, also two thingies. Zero thingies. Oh, well, you can't even see, hold on. I guess maybe the bottom right is gonna be the right place for my face? Let's figure out if that's true. Each member of your party has their own ca hand of cards. Highlighted on screen now. The color on the top of a hero's card matches the color of the hero's counter on the battle map. So this green guy is is Mr. Green Dude here, and Blue Lady is Blue Lady. All right, got it. Your skill cards are very versatile, as we will see. But we will start by trying out some basic skill card actions. You have four. You now have four cards in hand, each one of them with the following basic actions: move, melee attack, ranged attack, defend. Melee attack 2, defend 4. Range attack 3, move 2, and gain willpower. Hover over each card in turn for a detailed description. The blocker does not require a target, so simply drag it anywhere on the battlefield. Okay, so... So I can block. Block. And then this guy... Okay, so each... Okay, so it's not just one card a turn. Each character can do something. So... This guy can attack that guy. Oh, he is hit. Can I... Wait, can I just do as many things as I want? Oh. Cool, let's hide behind a rock. Excellent. Don't worry if you didn't get everything straight away. You can hover over a card at any time to bring up a description of all its game effects. Oh, so, uh, let's see here. <laughs> uh... Stealthy Assassin says, I was surprised he's streaming today. I uh, thought he was taking weekends off from now on. The inverse. Uh, I'm planning to take weekday mornings off from now on so that I can be kind of more helpful around the house and with the kids, getting ready for school, that kind of thing. Uh, the weekends are the days where most people in my house are sleeping in, and that's when I can just sort of uh, come here and stream and, and not be sort of, you know, uh, competing with other, with other jobs that I might be doing. When you feel that you've done everything you can or want to do, click the end turn hourglass, which is behind where my head is. Uh, doing this will allow the enemies to take a turn to fight back against your heroes. Well, what if I don't want them to fight back? What then? Okay, looks like... Okay, when you click end turn, each of your heroes will draw three new cards from their personal deck, so you have a fresh set of cards ready for your next turn. Now that you've picked up the basics of playing skill cards, let's learn about willpower! Willpower is this thingy! Most skill cards require willpower to play. The willpower cost is displayed in the top right of the card. The number in the center of the recycle shrine at the top of the screen indicates the amount of willpower you have to use. The recycle shrine, huh? Okay, so you should be able to finish off one char of the charred warriors with your power shot card. And I love this, like, should. I mean, they didn't really give me a lot of choices about what to do, and so I'd, have to do I'd probably have to do something weird to avoid having this guy be at, like, one health. So uh, this card will cost two willpower. So first you'll need to generate two willpower. Any skill card can be recycled to generate a single point of willpower. So try recycling one card from your hunter's hand and one from your warrior's to generate the required amount. Okay, so I've got two swipes here, so maybe I don't care about swipes. So now we've added one willpower and then we've already got some blocks, so let's just do that. 
So now, power shot costs two, but I can use it. And he explodes into tiny pieces. Oh, hello. In addition to generating willpower, any hero can recycle a card to move two spaces on, a, on the board. To assist your warrior, you can move your hunter up to engage the remaining charred warrior. Try this by recycling the remaining swipe card in your hunter's hand. Remember to recycle a card, either right-click it or drag it to the recycle shrine. Okay, so I grab swipe and I pull it to the recycle shrine. Okay. Um. Okay, so now he's got a highlight on him, so he can be moved. Move him to the space adjacent to the hostile shard, shard card. So, okay, pull him up. Okay, so that costs... Okay, interesting. I was, I was wondering how they were going to manage that. Like, the, the, the idea that when you recycle a card, you can do multiple things with it. Because I was like, am I going to have to select which thing? Is it going to be sort of a, an elaborate process of, like... Maybe I click to recycle it or I drag it to recycle it, then a menu will pop up and ask me what thing I want to do. But that's actually really elegant, where they basically assume, okay, we picked the one thing you want to do, but we're remembering that you just recycled the card. So with the most easy default thing is the willpower thing. So we've given you the willpower, but we're remembering you just recycled the card. So the other action is now available too. And if you take the other action, we take back the willpower. That's so quick. I love that. Now that your hunter is in place, he'll be able to attack, uh, assist in attacking the charred warrior. Use your remaining swipe card to attack your enemy. Um, I mean, I only have swipe from this character, but whatever. All right, let's see here. Stealthy Assassin approves of the art style of this game, which is cool. Yeah, like, this is very, uh, oh, what was the word for it? Skewamorphic? This is like, so, you know, some games do skewamorphic UI, and it's kind of like uh, where, where, you know, where the UI looks like a thing, right? And uh, sometimes it just feels, like, intrusive, or it makes the UI more complicated without making it better. But some games lean into it so hard that it, like, becomes the game. And, you know what, that, that, there's sort of, like, a weird valley in the middle where, where you know, skewomorphic UI is, is often inappropriate. But on the far end where it's not skewomorphic and it's just helpful and slick and clean, that's one good side. There's also a good side where the whole game is about how skewomorphic the UI is. And I'm on board for that stuff too. Uh, hopefully you notice that your hunter joined in with a combo strike for an extra, for extra, oh, I did not notice that actually. Uh, and it didn't actually finish off the chard. Uh, positioning your heroes properly to take advantage of the terrain and combo strikes while limiting your opponent's opportunities to gang up on your heroes is just as important as the cards you choose. Okay, yeah, that's the thing I was kind of wondering is, you know, when you've got a card game like this, I mean, say, for example, Hearthstone, it does not matter where the characters are on the board. It's just about the cards and the cards just do the stuff. Um, and so I was wondering what role the tokens on the map were going to play. So apparently it's about sort of arranging characters to coordinate their attacks and do, uh, do more damage or take more damage based on, on where they're positioned. So power cards are a different type of skill card. Rather than having an immediate effect, they give you ongoing bonuses. As before, hover on the adrenaline card. Okay, so this is a power, and it's just sitting here. Every time you play a card that does, you ma deals melee damage, gain one willpower. Okay, so I just let this sit here in my uh, hand and it does stuff. Okay, so I constantly have to recycle cards. So, so okay, so I'm not gaining willpower regularly. Wait, why can't I attack? Oh, oh, I was supposed to play it. I, oh, I play this on a hero. And I have to recycle two cards for it. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought it was I thought it was supposed to sit in my hand, but no, it sits on the hero. Got it. Okay, okay. Well done. You can view the powers active on your heroes by hovering over them. Uh, although they provide ongoing benefits, each one has its own health that is reduced whenever the character takes damage. So this one has eight, I guess. And so if I take eight damage, I lose the power. Okay. So now I've got move two and gain one willpower. And this doesn't cost you. Oh, my hunter is still undefended. But you can use one of your remaining cards to protect this hero too. And recycle cards that are unspent when you end your turn will be converted into defense. Okay, so I should end my turn. Okay, so I should recycle one card for some reason. And then end my turn. 
Oh, there's a plus two on my hunter. Okay. This indicates that if you end your turn now, they'll gain an additional two defense. As long as the recycled card is not spent for willpower or movement. Okay, so I now I... Ah! Okay, end of turn. Each hero might hold on to one card to prepare for the next turn if you don't want to play all your cards. Okay. Oh, so that's why I had to recycle that one card. It wasn't for no reason. It was so that... It was because I, I couldn't end my turn with more than one card in my hand. Okay, so during the enemy's turn, hopefully you notice two things. Your defense prevented you from taking any health damage when attacked. Your enemy had also played a power card. You can hover over the charred warrior to inspect the effect. So it gains one willpower at the start of its turn. Okay, not too bad. Okay, so that's the tutorial. A few reminders. Any skill card can be recycled to move a hero or provide an extra willpower point. Recycling cards is key to making the most out of each turn. Use what you've learned to defeat the remaining charred warriors. Remember to refer to the card and recycle shrine tooltips for a description of what you can do with each card. And oh, hey, I've got I've got a wizard. Got myself a wizard. <laughs> oh, no one might says that they've been playing State of Decay 2 all day and they almost lost all their survivors to juggernauts and ferals. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's part of the experience we're going for, right? Um. Okay, so... Okay, now I suddenly... Wow, it's like, in the tutorial, there's one specific thing to do each turn, but now I'm kind of overwhelmed by the possibilities. So, what does Force Missile do? It can't reach any of these enemies. It costs two willpower. Oh, and it's really helpful if the enemies are bunched up, and they're currently not. Target. Oh, oh, and this. Okay, there's a on the card for Flame Fan. You can see there's a little shape of the attack on there. It's a melee attack. Okay. Well, so I definitely want to take this guy out. I think it only it's only going to take three hits, or three whatever damage. Okay, so I I could probably just back up my hunter and use Power Shot if I had Willpower. Okay, so let's move him over here and gain one willpower. And similarly, let's move her and now, now can I power shot this guy over the head of my friend? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. Okay, what is the red one on the top of this? Hmm. I don't know what that what that red one is. Well, gaining willpower seems like a valuable thing. So does an offensive stance. I guess I'll just stack these powers all up on this character. Um, so I think that this character can't do a lot. So I'm just going to recycle both their cards. And now... So now I can move her there and do force missile. Oh, he's out of range? I thought it said within three. Oh, within three. I was counting the three between us. There we go. And then I'll leave this one in, in her hand. Wait, what? Okay, so I'm gonna leave this in her hand so that she gets defense, right? Except when I hover over the this guy, you cannot end your turn if any of your heroes have more than one card in hand. Oh, okay, okay. So I thought it was warning me that I couldn't click it, but I can click it. Okay, so he's prepared now. Oh, no, he's going to hit my wizard. No! Oh, but now he's in range for my... My previous attack that I already spent would have been great right now. But she didn't get any defense from that card. So I don't... Did I get that wrong? 
In addition to their skill cards, each hero has a unique talent you should be aware of. Talents are once per turn abilities that trigger automatically under certain circumstances. Mouse over hero to find out about their talents. So the first card I play each turn costs an item plus one willpower with her. Your first attack on, uh, on a single target each turn deals plus two damage. And once per turn after you play a card and are adjacent to an enemy, defend two on all of their heroes. Okay. So... Let's see here. So if I advance, I'm next to an enemy. Oh, I can click on the recycle gen to undo? Oh, neat. Okay, cool. Okay, but I can't undo things that have a random outcome. Interesting. That makes sense. Otherwise, you'd just be retrying them again and again and again. Oh, Stealthy Assassin says you burn the card for... Okay, okay. I, I think I know what you meant. So, okay, I'll, I'll try it again this next time. So, okay, so you burn a card. It's not that you leave a card in your hand. They were just... So they illustrated for me that you could burn a card for defense and that you could leave a card in your hand at the same time. And I thought that they were showing me that the card left in your hand was defending you. But actually, it's a card I burned that, burned that defended me. That makes more sense. Okay, cool. So Flame Fan... will hit a pattern of enemies that these guys do not quite fit. What about Unstable Blast? Ooh. <clears throat> okay, so I'm definitely going to do an Unstable Blast. Let's burn Flame Fan. So that my Elementalist can move. Sometimes you just don't get the cards you need in your hand. To mitigate this, each hero has a number of redraws they can use each battle. The number of redraws they still have is displayed to the left of their cards. So I guess over here. Uh, okay, so the, the the green indicator over here. Okay, got it. Okay, so now she's going to use an unstable blast, which will cost nothing, right? Wait, why can't she do it? Oh, oh, wait. Oh, they, 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 wait, I don't want to redraw. They're making me redraw. Okay, so let's say, okay, fine. Say, let's in, get rid of advance, and then I hit redraw, and it comes back out, and it's replaced. So, well, there's a lot going on on this little shrine. When I put cards on the shrine, until I actually use them, they're still there. Oh, that's so fascinating. It's like, that's not really... Huh. That's not very intuitive. Like I would not have thought of that. Like that's this is probably the, this is the reason I think that I'm play that I'm playing this game. Like if fate wanted me to play this game to learn something, it's probably the way this shrine works. Because you just put things on the shrine, and it commits automatically to one effect. But there's like a bunch of other things you can do with those cards while they're on the shrine. You can redraw. You can get defense. You can move. And depending on which one you do, that's what the cards are for. Oh, that's so weird. Okay, okay. So what was I gonna do? I was gonna unstable blast these guys, right? Yes, here we go. Blast. I could even do another one. But let's see here. Six. Oh right, because this is their this is his first hit. Okay, got it. And Power Shot has a range of three. Okay, so. Hmm. Let's use this because I'll get a combo and defense on my two friends. Okay, cool. And then this guy gets melee attack five. So let's burn a Power Shot. Move the guy right here. And then Power Shot him. Oh, I need to recycle more cards. Um, let's recycle the swipe. We're not going to be able to use it this turn anyway. And then power shot. Victory! Okay, so another thing I really think is interesting about this game is the fact that they've basically just made cards your currency. Like, cards are, you know, your powers, but they instead of giving you just sort of like a regular, like, like the way that Hearthstone gives you this regular escalating amount of power... Uh, over time, and or 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 like um, say, 
Slay the Spire or Monster Train or Grifflands gives you a consistent amount of power each time. These guys are like, you've got cards with a bunch of different prices, and you've got, and any card is worth one if you just burn it. And so you could, like, burn a, f burn a few cards to spend a lot of, like, you, you sort of have to play this balancing game in your head of, like, which cards am I going to burn and which cards am I going to spend? Interesting. Okay, let's choose adventure. Um, yeah, let's go medium and choose your quest. There's some lore quests. There's a challenge quest and there's the trial of fire. So, uh, oh, okay. So I can click any of these other ones. Let's go with trial of fire because that seems, yeah, seems good. And for now, let's play a short game. Just because we're still learning. Oh, I thought this guy's name was Raisin at first. His, his name is not Raisin. Um, okay, so I've got a bunch of equipment here. Okay, so each of these pieces of equipment gives me one power card or an attack card. So apparently, can I swap these out? Oh, okay, cool. And I can choose what gender the... Oh, I can choose the gender of the character. Cool. And... Oh, I could also do a user-created portrait. Oh, that's funny. I can name the characters if I want to. You know, I do have a um, a name a thing uh, channel point reward on Twitch. If, you, if if anybody wants to name these characters, feel absolutely free uh, to cash that in. In fact, one thing I should be doing is monitoring whether or not people have uh, have enabled any rewards. View request queue. Nobody has any time recently, but, you know, you're all free to. Um, so, the thing I don't know is how I get more of these items. I assume that over time... Oh, wait, wait. Oh, okay, there's an items column here, but nothing in it. Ooh, and some locked party members, too. Okay, so over time, I'll be getting party members, I'll be getting items... And I'll be able to drag him over. It's weird. Because they've done such a good job of making this look like it's printed in the book, I don't actually feel like these are buttons. Like, I, had, I it took me a second to realize that I could click on these and make things happen. Because they don't project out or they're not highlighted or don't have grooves around them or anything the way the buttons do. It's kind of odd. Okay. Anyway, let's uh, let's begin our journey. We'll get, we'll get started here. The settlement Terrell is dying. You must track down the settlement's leader, Naya, who has ventured out into the Glasslands in search of a powerful artifact, but has not been heard of for weeks. F new objective, follow in her footsteps. Track down Naya, the Voider leader, and return with her any news of her fate. Okay, so I'm getting this sense that this is like a... a some kind of, like, post-apocalyptic fantasy world? Like a dark, low-fantasy type world? I mean, it's called Ash, and I've got charred warriors, and there's the Glasslands. Like, this all feels very post-nuclear, but the magic version of that. Oh, Stealthy Assassin points out that maybe the reason why those, those buttons didn't stand out to me is they didn't have a hover effect, and he's absolutely right. This hover effect is really important to letting you understand that something is interactive. Welcome to Ash. To complete your quest to save Terran, you must undertake a perilous journey over the surface of a ravaged planet. Follow the golden objective marker to reach your next quest destination. To keep your supplies up and to find weapons and equip crucial, uh, equipment crucial to your quest, the party must visit points of interest. Okay, so is this going to be like um, Nowhere Profit? It's going to be like Nowhere Profit, I guess. Actually, probably very similar to Nowhere Profit. You should check out Nowhere Profit, by the way. It's a very good game. Uh, during your journey, you will need to keep track of your party's fatigue and morale levels. Okay. Keep an eye on your party's fatigue to keep in top fighting form. Keep your party fresh. Be sure to rest regularly by clicking this image. You get the most benefit from resting in ruins and settlements. Uh, because of the urgency of your mission, you only have a limited time to complete your objectives before despair overtakes your heroes. Take some time to explore, but keep morale high by making steady progress towards your objective. You can view your party's inventory as well as items currently equipped by clicking on one of the hero portraits to the left of the book. Doink. There he is. Hello, Rastin the Hunter. Oh, wow. you got... This is complicated. This game is complicated. <laughs> okay, so... I don't have any items over here, so I can't click them. 
how do I get back to the adventure? Here it is. Okay. We'll deal with that more later. I think maybe after we've earned some stuff. Choices matter. The game constantly saves your progress. You can leave and drop back at any time. There's no going back on your choices. Be warned, though. The land of ash is brutal and unforgiving, and death in Trials of Fire is permanent. If your whole party is defeated in battle, you will need to start a new adventure, so be careful out there. Good luck on your journey. Oh, I can't wait. Speaking of... Uh, uh, was it No One Mai who was talking about getting killed in a game? Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm about to join you, probably. Okay, so my objective is this direction. There's a thingy next to me here. Some ruins. Um, let's... Okay, so my objective is this way, so I think I need to be making progress towards my objective. It's so interesting that, like... These character portraits and this UI is not drawn in screen space, it's drawn in world space. Which gives it a sort of a different, it's like lit differently and just it feels really different. And the haziness of this thing emerging from the book, it feels like I'm like looking at an optical illusion. Okay, so let's grab the one that's closest to the path to my objective. Click on this. Okay, so a band of hybrid which look like that, apparently, uh, have laid claim to these ruins and refuse you access. They offer to refill your water skins if you will leave immediately. Um, yeah, let's accept the water and leave. <gasps> they bring forth a large skinned animal that seems to be acting like as a water trough. What? <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, a, sk a skinned animal like you're drinking out of its body? Or is it like... I, a part of me is imagining the restaurant at the end of the universe where, like, the cow walks up and is like, Hello. <laughs> Would you like to eat me? Here are my best parts. I'll go shoot myself now. Food supplies. Okay, so I love it when, uh, when, when a game includes food supplies, but they use a specific food as, uh, as the icon for it because it makes you... It's just fun to imagine that food always being what the characters eat. Like, we're just eating nothing but carrots now. Um, kind of like pizza in State of Decay 2. Okay. So, that was that. Now there's another one down here. Okay, it's night. Oh, that's where I started. Oh, I didn't recognize that I was in, in a place like that when I first started. Okay. So let's start moving this way. What's that? Is that a thing? No, it's just some kind of lake, I guess. Oh, here's a place. Oh no, an enemy. You hear sounds of labor coming from the ruins and soon come upon a group of hybrid, which look like this, uh, toiled, toiling to repair a section of the structure. Jara is greeted by a friendly band of mercenaries, descended from the hybrid who called this home before the ca who called this home before the cataclysm. Oh, I can spend a day training with the hybrid and level up. Yeah, let's spend a day training. Click someone to level up. I forgot which one of these was Jara. It seems like Jara would be appropriate. Was this one Jara? Oh, gosh, okay. So I drag a skill card from below to replace one of my old class skills. Okay, so I've, well, I've got two advances. They're about gaining willpower and moving, though. That's pretty versatile and nice. Melee attack three versus ranged attack four. Um, signal shot. Ranged attack three, then activate. What, what does activate mean? An activated unit can perform a free move to action. Okay. Melee attack two and draw movement card. Inflict exposed to all enemies in the area. I love how much they're explaining. So this this is actually like, this is in contrast. I've been playing Outriders like crazy. I have to have like a wiki open to understand all the status effects and everything in, in Outriders. This game is insisting on explaining every single one whenever I'm hovering over anything, which is gorgeous. Character takes one additional damage from all damage sources, cannot have stealth. Okay. Attacks on a single target deal bonus damage equal to the resilience of this power. Oh, oh! so while this power is really high, I'm taking... Huh. Oh, after attacking, this power loses one resilience. Okay, so each time I attack an enemy, I'll gain plus three, plus two, and then plus one against them. Hmm. Let's grab this one, and let's stick it on swipe. Okay, at the end of the day, their leader thanks you for your efforts and rewards you with some spare equipment. Ooh, bone toolkit. Okay, so I've got a bone toolkit now. 
Ooh, resting. Okay, so they're saying that I need to rest, probably. Maybe because I'm not as fresh? Hmm. The more shelter my location, the more effective the rest will be. And if you can find a settlement or a living world ruin to rest, uh, blah, blah, blah. Whatever stuff. Um, so I click up here if I want to rest. Well, let's just... I guess I have to rest now, so I'll rest. Fine. Camp tutorial! Okay, so camping has got a whole set of mechanics, too. Uh, although your mission is urgent, you need to stop to rest and recover stamina and help along the way. Each time you rest, your party will consume one unit of food, to make so make sure you keep stocked up. There's my food up there. Okay, so you can use the downtime and the resources you've collected to improve your hero's decks by choosing one of the available camp activities. Regardless of the activity, you will always need one food, and will restore stamina and health based on where you're camped. Okay. So, I can upgrade an item by using crafting materials. There's an environmental effect here. I gain plus 30% stamina and plus 2 health. No don't need any health. I haven't gotten any fights yet. So meditate, what would that do? Oh, forget a class card. Okay, interesting. So let's upgrade an item. Okay, so I don't have the materials that I need. Okay, apparently I need bone. Are all of my weapons made out of bone? Apparently all my weapons are made out of bone. Okay, so I, I, I think I can't, because I don't think I have... Yeah, insufficient materials. Okay, well, I guess we'll just rest then. Up ahead, you see a line of human slaves chained together. There are two rattling slavers. Oh, I'm I'm surprised they don't have an illustration of humans here. That, that, that feels like a missed opportunity. They're like, here is what a human is, player. Previously the dominant race during the living world, humans have suffered considerably both during and after the cataclysm. So now they're scattered, and now the rattlings are slaving them. Uh, attempt to ambush the rattling guards, approach the rattling guards, and offer to buy the strong-looking slave. Interesting. So do I have room for, like, a fourth character? Hmm. Oh, but if I fight... Let's fight them just so that I can get some more practice fighting. And also, they're slavers. Slavers are bad. Um, okay, so... I started with extra health. Oh, did I gain health from... Weird. Did I gain health from from resting? Like, beyond my normal... What I thought of as my maximum? That's interesting. Okay, so, is there a way to get my ranged guy into a position? Hmm. Okay, so let's put him here. Use his take aim power. Um, let's see here. Adrenaline. Every time... This is a power. Every time you play a card that deals melee damage, gain one willpower. Sure, let's put that on. Oh, I need more willpower to play it. Got it. Alright, well let's burn this and... Let's actually be in front of our ranged guy. Ranged guy can burn one. We'll also burn our melee attack if we don't have room for it. And then let's trigger adrenaline. So we'll be gaining willpower like crazy. And then prepare. Yeah, let's turn on prepare. And then we've got swipe, which will allow us to move. I assume they'll advance, and so this will be a good spot to be. I'm out of range, so I'm going to burn that, but I think that will turn into defense for me. Yeah, okay, so the little circling tadpole here means I can move, and the plus two means I can defend. Okay, so it's not that it just assumes that I want willpower. It also kind of assumes I want everything else. It just puts on the... Like, every time I burn a card, it just puts all the things I can do out in the UI, and then I decide which one to spend, and I lose the others. Okay, Rattlings, what are you going to do? Advance. Also advance, and they're getting willpower. Oh no, he's right next to me. No! Ow, that took some health. Iron Taunt. Oh, you pull everyone towards you? What? And you are very defensive now. Okay, excellent. Um, 
Okay, so if I get if I, I need to move this character to use Flame Fan. Oh, one of us is in a position to do a combo strike after a melee attack on an enemy other any other friendly characters adjacent to that enemy will automatically perform a combo strike for one additional point. Okay, got it. A character cannot perform a combo strike if they are adjacent to more than a single enemy. Okay. So like this guy can be hit by all three of these characters. And so All right, so what I probably want to do is swipe and then get out of the way so let's swipe this guy combo the heck out of him gained one willpower but now I'm going to advance over here and the reason I'm going to advance over there is because I'm going to use flame fan on these enemies named effects their ongoing effects can hinder a character in battle like burning or exposed a named effect will last until the end of the affected character's turn. Applying the same named effect more than once will not double up the effect, but will increase the duration. Okay. I like that that's consistent. You know, when you've got, you know, the more consistent you can make your rules, the more, like, you can do more weird things with the game if you make the things that are not, like, the, the like, if, if you know, if a burning effect had one rule about duration, but then an exposed effect had another rule and a different effect had another rule, they would all be too complicated to learn. But if you give, like, if you have to come up with these different status effects and each one does its own thing, but everything else about them is the same, that's so much easier to understand. Hmm. Let's see here. Okay, so... I did that. Now, Unstable Blast. Magic Attack 3 on all targets in the indicated area. So that will wipe out one guy and at least take out the other guy's defenses. Hmm. Each of these would actually be useful. I'd love to fire both of them off, but I don't think I can get enough willpower to do it. So. Oh, yeah, I still don't, I don't have enough willpower to even fire this first. One. Okay, so let's let's burn force missile. And then do an unstable blast. Takes out one guy and hurts this guy's defenses. Oh, okay, so this guy, because he's burning, he gets damage at the end of his turn, but he also gets damage every time I do more magic on him. That's interesting. That's cool. So, let's see here. Okay, so power shot is range attack 8. I could take him out with a power shot. So let's do that. Let's take him out with a power shot. Boom! Alright, so I took one hit, which was inadvisable, but I was able to take them all out in the next turn. I love how it melts into the book! It's so cool! Oh, oh! So I can level somebody up. Um, um, um. She was neat. Okay, so some basic swipey type stuff. Storm conduit. After playing a card that deals damage, deal two magic damage and inflict shock to a random enemy within four spaces. <laughs> kind of like that one. Two magic damage inflict shocked on an enemy. What does shock do? Okay, whenever hit by melee or ranged attack... Do okay, so this is like a crowd control type thing. When you're attacked by an adjacent enemy, inflict burning on the attacker. Hmm. I kind of like this one because it, it, it'll just start passively working while I'm doing other stuff. An arcanist manual, sure. And some coins! Okay, so this guy asked to join my group. I'll accept my request. The request is a new follower. His name is Adam. He's a blacksmith. And he can upgrade stuff at a reduced cost. Okay. Okay, so speaking of stuff. Aha! Yes. So, I've got weapons and armor. I can figure out what to do with them. So, toolkit... Target friendly hero upgrades a card in his hand and reduces its cost by one. Okay, so this is so this is a new card that this character can have in their hand that lets other characters upgrade their cards. Okay, and then this one, probably it's a magey type thing. Eldritch Grasp. So magic attack four and push the target in a random direction. Any damage bonus counts double. 
Do I already get damage bonuses? Maybe? I don't know. This seems really cool, though. So we're going to grab that. Okay, so we're just loading up on equipment. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I've got very little food. I should probably try to do something that gets me some food at some point. Let's keep going this direction. You enter a strange encampment set up by a band of human scavengers. A mystic offers to sell you some items her group has uncovered, but says cryptically that you will have to trust her. Barter for an artifact. I don't have that kind of money. I, I don't have any of this kind of money. Okay, so never mind. That was a waste. Some kind of thing over here, though. It's in the glasslands. On the path ahead lies a body of a female ratling who does not seem to be moving. Something doesn't feel right about this scene, though. It looks like a good spot for an ambush. Hmm. Uh, I want to fight. You feel for a pulse? It's weak, but she's still alive. She suffered a serious wound to the back of her head. It looks like she's been attacked from behind and knocked unconscious. Ooh. Okay, so I've got only one food. Interesting. So, so this, like, I get food for this, but 50% chance of an injury. This, I get a 50% chance of a reward. I don't have any food left. Like, I've got the one food. That's it. But I am noble. Okay, and no reward. So now I'm starving. Well, let's hope there's some food over here. Oh, man, we're tired now. Hmm. So, it looks like something might be buried here. Sure, let's dig. A wooden box. Got some cash in it. Yay, cash. Okay, we're going to need to get some food at some point. These are settlements. Okay, let's... I can confront the ratling. Okay, let's see. You enter a settlement and immediately hear a commotion ahead. You quicken your pace and spot several ratlings with weapons around, forcing a column of human people to turn over their possessions. So you can intervene, barter with them. Let's intervene. Maybe there will be food as a result of this fight. Oh, archers. Rattling bowmen. Okay, well, this could be problematic. Hmm. Hey, a uh, Jedi. Looks like we got somebody trying to sell sell us stuff in the uh, in the chat there. Hmm. So, okay. So, your first. Uh, what am I gonna do here? So, do I want to turtle up while they approach? How far? How far can they? I can't tell what their cards do. So I probably want to advance so that... Like, if I could take this character out, that'd be amazing. Hmm, I don't have a power shot, though. Hmm. These are not the best cards for this. Specifically this guy. I feel like really should have yeah this guy both of these characters have got fancy ranged attacks that they're not using power shot there we go range attack 5 similarly storm conduit's cool and all let's lose these two and redraw force missile Okay, yeah, this one will be effective. Cantrip. Ooh, magic damage gives me one willpower. Sure. Okay, so I need to get this character within three of this character. So one, two, three. So I want to get this character to this spot, which is two moves. And with power shot, what's the range of the power shot? Can it just be anybody? I may can't do it now because I don't have any willpower, but. Okay, oh, oh, it's showing me. It's highlighting the enemies that I can hit. Okay, so. I can hit either of these guys already from where I am. I just need to have the willpower. Alright, so let's. 
gain some willpower that way. I'm not going to be able to melee attack, so let's burn some willpower this way. Let's power shot this guy. And then force missile is the thing I want to... So, okay, so I want to use cantrip. Oh, oh, okay. So, okay, so how much... Hmm... I want to use cantrip, and I want to use force missile, and I want to move her twice. That costs four cards. I've got four cards. Hmm. I could also do storm conduit, actually. These guys are bunched up. They might be good. So let's okay. So let's let's actually burn cantrip and strike through. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Never mind. Let's back that up. Because I forgot she has to burn them for her to move with them. That's right. So she might, in order to get into position, she has to actually burn both of her powers. Because Force Missile still... Okay, yeah, so she has to burn both of her powers. But now she can force missile. Oh, oh! Except somebody has to burn another card. She uses force missile and it hits two characters. That was the goal. And then I've got these two cards that remain. Let's use them for defense. Now she's exposed. Not the status effect. She's just yeah. Ooh, fatigue. Ow. And now they've got a bunch of defense. Okay. So. I can power shot again. That'll do something. Take aim. All attacks on a single target do bonus damage. I would need to burn something for willpower. What can she do? Force missile. So she can also do that. She can do the same thing she did before. Hmm. The thing I can't tell is whether... Oh, within three spaces. So she would have to advance to here keep using her abilities and that kind of puts her in a bad way she could do it in fact she's gonna do it <laughs> oh wait she needs to somebody needs to burn something for her to go Okay, so they just hit their defenses. But... This guy... Can do bonus damage. So let's... Hmm. Let's burn adrenaline. Burn prepare and burn advance. So this guy can both take aim and power shot, which kills that enemy. But my wizard's exposed. This is probably going to be bad for me. Hmm. Oh. So Renneth Court is playing the um, the public test realm for State of Decay 2. Ouch. Um, it says that apparently... Uh, uh, he's getting some robo voice occasionally. So, yeah, so when we are implementing VO in State of Decay 2, the first thing, we, we write all of the VO, and then we robo voice all of it. And so just every new line is robo VO. Um, and then we go and record those lines and swap out the robo VO for real stuff. So we can basically start playing the game with VO before we've actually recorded the VO, the voiceover. Um, and so... 
But sometimes, for instance, if we believe that there's a line that uh, that we're going to have, and then we don't end up recording it, we, we have to go through and find and find those places and remove the RoboVO that didn't get replaced. So yeah, good. I'm glad you pointed that out. I'm not sure if that's been caught yet on our side. So thank you. All right, so nine. Can I do nine damage? Hmm. So yeah, I can do two attacks here. I can burn these ones to, to fuel it. It'll be not quite enough though. Hmm. Okay, so let's burn this. Eldritch grasp this guy. And now they get closer. And now this guy with his yeah, he can do his improvised attacks if I burn some stuff. So let's burn some stuff on the character that I'm just hanging back with. And improvise attack again. Wait, what? There we go. And victory! Again, just hurting the wizard. That's apparently what I do. Acrobat's bracers. Nice. Bone sword. Nice. Um, unfortunately, no food. <laughs> Hmm. All attacks deal plus one damage per adjacent enemy. Interesting. Ah, okay. So this, this is what I need. Because I need some way to protect the wizard. Oh, okay. I need food. And they've given me food. Thank you, humans. Okay, so this bone sword situation. Is this... Okay, so I've already got a bone sword. So I could actually equip another bone sword. Oh, wow, this is fa This gives me two abilities, two cards. So yeah, getting this character to move fast is really important. And now she's got two double sex. She's dual wielding. I mean, she's got like nine swords on her back in the picture, so that makes perfect sense. Okay, so we are tired. We should probably rest. I don't think I've got any... Yeah, I don't have any... I, I haven't received any upgrade-type equipment, so I think I'll just rest. And we're all out of food. Let's go next door. Ooh, a small settlement seems to be exclusively hybrid. They have only limited supply to sell outsiders. Okay, so let's... Okay, so this is where I can get the bone to upgrade my stuff. Okay, so that cost me 35 just to get one bone. 35 for one food, that seems important. I haven't seen much of a call for this other stuff, really. Armor one. Hmm. Fairly expensive. Oh, and this is what's needed to upgrade my blue equipment. So my green equipment needs bone. My blue equipment needs forged metal. Got it. So I'm actually curious. Does this give her? Okay, this gives her armor two. Armor two. Where is? I don't understand how armor is used, actually. Each point of armor provides one additional health at the start of every battle. Oh, gotcha. Okay, okay, so each of my characters, they, when they start with higher than 10 health, that gives them some room to take a little bit of damage each fight, and that's coming from their armor. Okay, got it. So that means it's actually pretty valuable for me to pick up some some bracers. So you know what? I'm picking up some bracers. And I'm putting them... Actually, I should probably put them on her, because I keep putting her in danger. So, there we go. JRI7 says, I really like this game. Yeah, this, this is... There's just so much here. I feel like I just barely understand it. There's so much going on. 
You hear the monotonous clank of a blacksmith's hammer hitting an anvil. I thought it said striking a human up ahead. Striking an anvil up ahead. You approach the shop where a human apprentice greets you warmly. Oh, more stuff to buy. Ooh, okay. 35. So I could either get more food or I could get some bone and upgrade a thing. Let's get some bone and upgrade a thing. Because So next time we rest, we're going to upgrade something. Just because I want to see that mechanic. The mountain ranges of ash can impede your travel, but look carefully. Maybe it'll have entrances to ash's underways. Look for these by looking for the telltale signs of fog and water leaking out onto the glasslands. Underways, huh? Oh, oh, wow. Okay, so it's like a cave that goes underneath the mountains. But it's going the wrong direction. Oh, let's go anyway. Whoa. This looks so neat. Okay, actually, let's... Oh, we're tired. Let's go over here because, I don't know, there's probably cool stuff underground. Charred hunters. What? No. Four of them with such health. Okay, this seems bad. Okay, so I'm fatigued. So I'm getting less cards. Okay. Well, this was a bad plan. <laughs> um, alright. Actually, you know what? It's been an hour. Let's leave this video on a cliffhanger. Aren't cliffhangers great? Everyone loves cliffhangers. Uh, so, if you want to see how this battle turns out, uh, I'll put that video up there. You can subscribe to my channel. And, uh, yeah. Those of you who are watching me live, I'm going to keep playing right now. I just realized this was going to be a really long video. <laughs>